Sandra Eze Kwasilile. And you're listening to 99.3 Nigeria Info. COVID-19 was the biggest story uh, by the time it was April, to be honest with you. Uh, that was the biggest story of the month. There were so many pandemic-related issues in April. Here in Lagos, the lockdown was in full swing and enforcement was grabbing the headlines. Do you remember this story? 600 cars impounded. That's the hard fact from the Lagos state government. You already know that for the last few days, they've put soldiers and police on the expressways to stop people violating the lockdown. And they've impounded 600 cars so far. That happened in April. And stuff like that kept happening throughout April. It wasn't just every day uh, Lagosians were breaking the rules. It was everybody. You had celebrities, you had political leaders also as well. I'm sure you've heard by now that Funke Akindele was arrested yesterday. She's the actress who plays Jennifer. Her and her husband, JJC, threw a party in their house on Saturday, but a birthday party for him. And video from the party got on the internet. There were more than 20 people in their living room and they were not doing social distancing. Now, one of the guests at that party was Babatunde Badamosi. If you remember, he ran for governor in 2019 and recently he joined the People's Democratic Party. He's also the owner of Amen Estate, where the party took place. And he made a video apologizing for his part in the situation. So, yeah, they ended up in court, but Akindele was found uh, guilty and sentenced to community service uh, while Badamosi had his charges dropped because of his video apology. He went on to run for Senate last month to replace Adeba Yoshino, who incidentally died of COVID-19. Speaking of dead government officials, Abba Kiari's funeral also made the news. Do you remember? Yeah, his, his uh, funeral made the news at the time. You already know Abba Kiari, the president's chief of staff, died of COVID-19. You also know he was buried in Abuja this weekend. So let's talk about all of that in our second story. The burial has caused a lot of controversy. I don't know if you saw it on TV or saw pictures online, but yeah, it looked just like a normal funeral. You had a crowd of people there, definitely more than 25 people. There were family members, staff of the presidency, and even some ministers. Garba Shehu was there. That's the president's media advisor. And a lot of Nigerians are angry about the video and the pictures. They're asking, isn't this the reason they arrested Funke Akindele? Isn't this why they said churches and mosques should close? Why should a crowd gather for a funeral? Is it because it's a big man? Back in April, I was asking that question. And I was doing that show from my house, by the way. Do you remember? That funeral created a lot of controversy. Nigerians did not like the optics of this uh, VIP getting a big funeral while other people were getting buried without loved ones there. And the heat was so much that uh, the SGF had to apologize for attending. Do you remember, Boss Mustafa, he had to apologize for attending. Now, before we talk about more COVID in April, Lagos, let me talk to you about uh, the story so far. Why were so many people, why do you think so many people were willing to disobey the lockdown? 600 vehicles impounded in Lagos. What did you think of that impounding? What about the situation where Funke uh, Akindele was convicted, but uh, Badamosi had his charges dropped. What about VIPs overcrowding uh, Abakiari's funeral in violation to COVID-19 guidelines? Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. Share your thoughts via WhatsApp as well. WhatsApp is 80 nine five nine seven five eight oh five oh eight oh nine five nine seven five eight oh five. Tweet at us at Nigeria Info FM. Use the hashtag Nigeria Info HF. HF stands for hard facts so that we can see it whenever we click on that particular hashtag. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Hello, thanks for calling us. What's your name? Sandra. Yes, what's your name? I'm Sandra. This is Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank, welcome. Go ahead. Yes, I want to talk about this, you know, I something. This what? 
the national ID. Oh no, we've moved on from that now. We're not talking about it anymore. Okay, we are now in the, this. Um, We're reviewing the year now. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, about um, COVID-19. Yes. Abby? Frank, go and listen and then call me back, okay? As they know, good state, welcome. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, you see the issue of uh, COVID-19, eh? Mm -hmm. It's only the four men that the law holds. Okay. All the big men, they are disobeying the law. Even right here in, my, in this uh, local place, I said. Because... The, I'm hearing the your radio. That, can, can you turn your radio off? I'm hearing your radio. Oh, sorry. Yes. All right, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Ooh, okay, we're still hearing your radio. As a call back, if you can. Austin but, is in Gowan Estate. Austin, how are you? Fine. How are you doing? I'm good. Go ahead. Yes, I say in Nigeria, in our Nigeria of today, mm. laws are made for the punishment of the poor and the downtrodden mm. and for the celebration of the higher mighty in the society. So if anything happens like that, it shouldn't be a surprise to you because this is what we have found ourselves in. Mm. So I'm not surprised. All right. Thank you. Not surprised, Austin says. 99.3, hello? <phone rings> Sorry about that. Call back if you can. If you just joined the show, we're taking a look at uh, 2020. Looking back at 2020, one month at a time. And we're talking about April. I've told you the biggest story for that month was COVID-19. So many pandemic-related issues. Uh, we had 600 vehicles impounded. We had celebrities getting arrested, politicians as well. But you had politicians who attended a funeral and nothing happened. But when there was outcry, uh, the SGF came forward, Boss Mustafa, and apologized for that situation. Now, as we look back at April, we're still talking about COVID-19. But now, let's talk about how government handled the fallout. Crude oil prices crashed in March and April, remember? And so the federal government said it would have to slash the budget. And of course, here in Lagos, we had to lock down. We had the lockdown, which was affecting the economy. Offices and businesses shut down. People were put on half salary or put on unpaid leave. It was rough. And then government promised to step in and to help. And that's when we started hearing about palliatives. The federal government says it will be giving money to 11 million poor Nigerians. The Minister for, for Humanitarian Affairs said this, Sadia Omar Farouk. She said, government already has the list of these 11 million people in 35 states. They call the list the social register. Now, I did the math. There are 200 million Nigerians. If 11 million are on the social register, that's one in 20. Now, you who is listening to me, you know 20 people. You know hundreds of people. Do you know anyone on the social register? Are you on the social register? I'm asking because if 5% of Nigerians are indeed on the register, it should be a big enough deal that we all know somebody on it, right? I'm still asking that question today, by the way. That, that clip you listened to was from back in April. Do you know anybody who was a recipient of palliatives or who was on the social register? 0700-993-993-993. Throughout the pandemic, uh, the question has been, is Nigeria doing enough tests? Is Nigeria doing enough tests? Back in April, NCDC set themselves a target of 1,500 tests per day. But at that time, they were doing less than 500 tests a day. And then there was a problem of PPEs for medical workers. How do you think government handled COVID-19 in April? Why do you think that uh, there were so many problems with supplying PPEs? Do you know any Nigerian who was a recipient of palliatives or who was on the social register? Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. Hello, thanks for calling. Hello, Hello President Sandra. Good, good evening. Good evening. What's your name? Yes, you have Adi Matthias on the line. Good to have you on the show. Go ahead. 
President Sandra, you and I know that in this part of the war, like the one guy said on your program, it is better to look for a way and leave this country to be a slave in your country. The mighty keep growing and they don't want us to do anything. When issues happen, they keep bringing things that will damp, just damp our spirits. In COVID-19, both Mustafa, who is the chairman of that organization, know what happened. And he went there and came back. He tell you, after I will apologize to Nigeria. And he did. Everything went off like this one. But the ordinary man was snatched. The, the cars were collecting on the street when they were looking for food to eat, doing this, doing that. Nobody said nothing about this. And they are now coming again. We are going to resist it this time. Let's die on the COVID-19. It's going to be better for Nigerians to die on the streets and to lock us in again without giving us nothing. No palliative, no nothing. Much. I could remember on those difficult times I called my brother in the U.S. He told me he has not linked his account with, the, with what they call national insurance. So he was able to get his money. Two days later, he got his money. He was the person that sent me money from America. We have our national insurance. We have all these things, registering this. Every day we keep hearing different things to register. And we are getting nothing in feedback. God bless Nigeria. Thank God bless Nigeria. Thank you for calling. Organeta guys in Lekki. Organeta, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, to me, our, our, go our government did not handle uh, COVID-19 problem okay. uh, properly. Because I could remember very vividly when when we were laid down from our, I mean, when we were asked to stay at home from our, from our workplace without stay. You know, before before we were asked to stay at home, I was I was doing my, I mean, as normal, I was observing the all the protocol of coronavirus. I was I was present presenting myself. This is my not my, you know, what, what, what they now stop us, and there's no any income for me. I'm on, I have to enter the street, oh, even in the midst of the lockdown. Yes, I have to enter the street, obviously. But now, what 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 that surprise is that I could I, I didn't I, I could I could not get I, I didn't get coronavirus because if I tell you why I enter the why I I I, I, I could I, I wasn't even minded the you know but at the end of the day when they now call us back they tell us everyone of us has to go through a coronavirus test in Lekki I did my own I was surprised it was negative I was saying wow so this. This are the reasons why so many people believe there, there's no corona because and our government officials they, 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 they never lead by example. So I said, wow, just how my movement toward the, this thing, I couldn't get corona. I was surprised. So to me, I, I think we are just, you know, we are just, we are just exaggerating against coronavirus. I know, but the way our government official people make it look like really there was, I mean, there's no coronavirus in Nigeria. Uh, but I don't know because, you know, I'm using my, my, myself for, for example. I couldn't get corona. That's why where I enter, the way I know these people. I was, how, how do you know yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. get it? Were you tested? I was tested you know, because uh, later on, they now call us back from our work. Mm -hmm. when, when, when after the lockdown, mm -hmm. they now call most of, I mean, some of us back to the, some, some of us, uh, some of the staff back mm -hmm. to the company. Mm -hmm. So they say we, have, we need to go, go through a uh, coronavirus test. Mm -hmm. so they are going to pay for it. I said, well, no, Allah. And, and you didn't I get it. For six hours later. Mm. For six hours later. I said, I, I was negative. I said, ah, I was negative. I was surprised. So, and our government obviously didn't make it really, because the way they, they were doing it, they were having it then. You know, social gathering, they, they never observed it. And they, they, in, in, the, in the chain of their so cooperative as well, the way people are gathered, you know, jam pack like Sandrine, you know, all these things encourage most people and i live in etiosa mm -hmm. i was told etiosa i was the is in lagos state mm -hmm. and the way i relate people doing the after our, after we lay down i mean after our, our we are being asked to, to stay at home from mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. when i start to you know to feed myself i mean i, I, I go chop and i don't go chop i go chop and i feed my family so i have to enter anywhere do all kind of you know meet people of you to get money and you didn't get not, it not to, not to, I, I didn't see for but you know all those uh cleaning work, you know, meet the pool, you know. Mm. I didn't get Koroda. All right, lucky you. What can I tell you? Thanks for calling. Leslie Nikorodu, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, this morning, I had only two days off, so I went for the NIMC registration. On getting there, 
the lady that is there is in my area. Mm. She said, after waiting for a long while, she said we have to pay 3000 and elderly 2000 This is very good, Nikodi. Do you know her name? Uh, she re- refused to give out her name. Did you take a picture of her? No, I wasn't able to Can do you that. Can you go back, find out her name, take a picture of her? Okay. All right. If you can go back, find out her name, uh, take a picture of her, send it to my social media, uh, either Facebook, Sandra Ezekwesili, or Twitter, S. Ezekwesili. I'll forward it to Nimsi, okay? Okay. Thank, okay. thank, thank you. Thank you, Leslie, for calling. Oye Nikurudri is on the line. Oh, oh Sandra, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Quite an age. Mm. Mm. Nigeria, for you, mm-hmm. April, we all suffered it. But I understand what is happening that, you know, uh, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than the other. And that is what you see. If it's still happening now, all these uh, the, uh, face masks and all the other things, when you see them, even at their conferences and meetings, you can see that half of them will have it, half of them will not have it. And that is one of those things. Even in buses, they got state buses. I see com- complaining this day, mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. that they still don't do it. And we say we are having the second lockdown. Whether lockdown, whether not lockdown, I don't think any Nigerian would accept any lockdown because the suffering was too much. Mm. Why would somebody go for a funeral and all of them there and only the person that made the law, that were, were sanctioning the law, mm. was there and was apologizing? What does that do to you? What does that mean to you? We are waiting. I know everything will be okay. Have a nice evening, my dear. You too, Oye. Thank you for calling us. Now, to be clear, there's no second lockdown yet. Uh, we have the president's uh, media aide, Bashir Ahmed, tweeting a very cryptic tweet, suggesting that there could be one. Um, uh, we have Lagos state government uh, imposing stricter restrictions because the numbers are rising again and Nigeria seems to be in the middle of a second wave. And like we're seeing from other countries, the second wave seems to be uh, more infectious uh, infectious than the first wave, which is why our numbers daily are uh, have been in the thousands in the past few days. Uh, t- today, it's today, yesterday's number was as low as 501. But who knows, you know, uh, if, if perhaps we go back to how things were, not the full lockdown now, because don't forget, the Lagos State Governor is saying, I don't want to do a full lockdown, but the only way we can avoid that is if people obey the restrictions that we've put in place right now. So from grade 14 down, work from home if you're a civil servant. No more clubs, uh, which were supposed to be closed, technically, but <laughs> they went and arrested a bunch of people at Cubana over the weekend. Uh, if you're a club, closed. If you are um, uh, a concert, no concerts, no street parties, no Owambe, nothing. Everywhere shut down. Uh, keep the social da- distancing to the maximum. Wear your mask, sanitize. Uh, the governor says if we can do that, we're going to avoid a second lockdown. But if we cannot do that... Uh, who knows? Now we're seeing a tweet from Bashir Ahmed, who is the president's uh, media aide, that seems to be suggesting he hasn't made any announcements yet, but it's suggesting that we could lock down again. Frank in Ojo, how are you? Welcome. Happy Sandra. Mm-hmm. Now you have heard what we're talking about, Abby. Uh, even if you got my call, me and you know if you were. <laughs> welcome you know back. You okay, welcome back. You know. This thing, I, I don't like, I don't remember the name. That is why I was like, the thing where I was like uh, thinking, are you, are you getting me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> For auto here, mm. it's 5,000 naira. If you don't have it, nobody will attempt to you. What's 5,000 naira? Registration. We're not talking about Nin now, one ne. No, I was that was uh, that was what I was just trying to tell you, so that you, because as we said now, mm. you, you told the woman to try to get the name or mm. to snap of the person. To you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was why I what I wanted to know okay. how to do about it because I, 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 I I'm sure I'm going to do that. Are you on Facebook? I'm on I'm on all the whole social media. Uh-huh. Just find me Facebook Sandra Ezekwesili, Twitter S Ezekwesili. Find me DM send it to my inbox. Yeah, and I'll just send it to Nimsi. Okay, then for this um, for lockdown, mm. now they are giving us mandate of uh, uh, cutting or uh, disconnecting us from from their from their line, from their network. Then two, they are talking again for the second lockdown. All this is now is affecting only the promises. For them there now, nothing is happening to them. 
But what thing I know is this. All the, all the why we have been mentioning names the radio. I don't think if I have had any any common person's name in the radio that, that was affected. It's only them and them. And it will continue happening on to, on to all of them. I, I'm a they, common they person. Us. I'm a common person. And, uh... You are a common person. That is why it, it cannot happen to you. It w- you are <laughs> a common person. It how how do you know that it didn't happen to me? Because you are, a, you are my sister. You are a good person. So because I'm your sister, I can't catch COVID. Even if you are not my sister, it, it's not only me. Do you know how many we are under this roof now, under this call now? Mm. Millions. So because I'm a good person, I can't catch COVID. Yes. So all the people good, that have caught it. In, catch so COVID. so all the people. So all the people that have caught it in Nigeria, are they not good they people? They are bad, bad people now. Are you not hearing the answer? So if you hear now that I've caught it, you will say I'm a bad person. No, I will. I will investigate. <laughs> I cannot just agree. Frank, thank you for calling me. Uh, Godwin in Lakwe, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, our friend, do is a question so from <laughs> Welcome, how are you? Me, Ike, do God. How do you man know? Keep on. Ike, ne, de, she, ku, alo, na, go, fumo, fumo, ba? On, I got, no, small, small. Okay, happy Christmas in advance. Same to you. Sandra, you will be great once more, and be great again, and be great again, Jesus' name. Amen, thank you. Your level of handling issue and the maturity, your deeper understanding within your age, I think, Minister of Information, the better one, or not anyhow, one will uh, somehow, it's not the like, like type of, uh, you are by grace of God, you will get there in Jesus' name. I, okay, thank you. <laughs> is, is that right? Mm. Now, talking about this. Uh, the government policy, giving directives to the people, and unfortunately, they refuse to live by example. You discover that they will talk from the left mouth side of the mouth and do this different thing from the right side of the mouth. And they expect people to follow. Going back by the April and the death of uh, Abakari and uh, to recap, mm. you discover that people who say do this, and they are doing the opposite. As a father that you live anyhow life, and you want your children to live the way you talk, and you don't live by the example. Is that possible for those children to respect your policy and allow the way to live the way you talk and you live different way? You say a child don't steal and you are stealing. Don't you think that a child will copy you well? And unfortunately, you can see the recycling methods and ways of which the way they do, they rule, they talk, and it's not the way it's supposed to As a result. There is no respect to those policies, those of those policies. Nobody respects it any longer. I bet you, with the experience had during this lockdown, call it a palliative measure, call it palliative a donation and whatever, even the one that was not donated, provided by the government, you can imagine somebody holding it, saying that he wants to issue it out the, the day his birthday is going to take place. This is not something he did not partake or provide, though, but he's keeping it for the day. Somebody is going to have his birthday. And what happened when they want to baptize them? The people who noticed about the something, they went to loot it, and they became open. If it is where we have a good system, those people who kept those things for their selfish desire, they're supposed to be locked up for doing such a thing. But our corruption fight is only for mount. And, uh, of course, PDP is no more to be blamed again. Godwin, we need to take a break, unfortunately, but thank you so much for calling. You are listening to your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.
What will you do if you win a million Naira this month? This Christmas, one lucky player will close the year with one million Naira cash in the ZBet end of year promo. To stand a chance, all you have to do is sign up and place a minimum total bet of 5,000 Naira on ZBet.ng between the 7th and the 23rd of December and automatically qualify. That's not all. Two other friends will also win 250,000 Naira each. Visit www.zbet.ng for more details. ZBet will speak your game. They make you scatter house like this, eh? I beg, you, you help me see my air pencil. Ah, I, I carry and give Shade yesterday, oh. Eh? But you know they use them again now. Yes. You don't carry my bonus gift and no pity. <laughs> now today you go pack out. Eh? On top air pencil. Yes, so if you don't reach 15 days where you never use your air pencil, go find them now, now. Because why? Oh, bon girl, we'll put on top of. Hey, get 2,000 Naira air time plus extra 200 MB for just 200 Naira. The more you recharge, the more you are woofo. To begin, enjoy this awu. Just dial star 241 star 7 ash. Terms and conditions, Deo. Airtel, the smartphone oh. network. Christmas season and Adjo Lemon Friday is here again. This time, it's bigger and better. Now is your time to become a landlord. Enjoy up to 40% discount this Lemon Friday with special goodies delivered to your doorstep. Buy a piece of land from Adrian Homes this Christmas and enjoy mouth-watering Christmas gifts like Double Dog Fridge, Adrian Seasoning Pack, Electric Iron, Blender, Deep Freezers, Refrigerators, 49-inch TV, 50kg bag of rice, turkey, vegetable oil, and a whole bee cow. To enjoy this amazing Lemon Friday offer, subscribe to any Adrian land within our estates in Shimawa, Ibejuleki, Ekwe, Bajagri, Imota, Abelkuta, Ijeboje, Shagam, Atota, Ibaja, Oshun, Nasarawa, and Abuja with an initial deposit of 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 Naira or more. For more information, call this number 0805-625-9683, 0905-897-0587. This is a special Lemon Christmas like no other. Offer valid from October 2020 to January 2021. This Lemon Friday, we move. Yeah. Here is the list of excuses that will no longer be accepted. Eh, uh, Otta Jigwe, eh, uh, I beg, eh, uh, I beg, give me your hotspot. I, I want my data, but this one, too much. Please, could you put your Wi-Fi on? I'm out of data, and the recharge card seller has closed. Oh, I would have recharged, though, but I can't find my wallet. <laughs> Please, I've got cramps, and I can't get up. Can you share your hotspot? Oh, no. Don't know where my internet token is, and I need to quickly buy data. Please, could you share your hotspot till I find it? Hey, Jumbo, I will buy data, but that recharge card seller need to ever get you. How good you are? <laughs> now, there's really no excuse to ever be out of data with no borrow me data. Dial star 321 hash to borrow data now and pay later. I beg, I say share your hotspot. This rain for hard. Make a thunder, no go fireman. <laughs> the largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Where will the servant of God even save enough to buy a car and land in this Lagos, eh? Man of God, are you still thinking about this? Of course. Do I look like a millionaire to you? Ah, man of God. At go home. That's make this possible now. Eh? See, eh? If you buy two plots of land at Nation View Estate, they will give you a plasma TV. Eh? Mm, look at you. If you buy eight plots of land, they will give you 20 10 Corolla and microwave. Ah, woo, Kule. How long have you known this? You're a wicked person. And that is why the only book says, ask and it shall be given unto you. There's a gift for everyone. You can buy one plot, two, four, seven, or even ten plots of land at Nation View Estate, Bogijen, Lekki, and win multiple prizes. Or buy 12 plots of land and get a 2014 Corolla free. Don't miss out on this limited offer. Valid till the 21st of December 2020. Call 0905-5555-446. Again, 0905-5555-446. Terms and conditions apply. At Go Homes, reality to wealthier life. This thread of frustrating me. How does a round make you come and do not for God's sake? Ah, my deadline is tomorrow. What are you thinking about, Angela? Even me, me more than everything. I've been more stressed. And my workload at my job has increased rapidly. My bills have also gone up. And I'm thinking of how I can meet up. And I don't even have enough to fund my fashion designing hustle. Wow, that's quite something. You can't just sign up on a lab and get a salary-based loan. You don't have to step in a bank and save your documentation. Really? Download the app and have access to the salary-based loan to help you manage things better. That's what I've been doing, though. And they've been giving me the financial support I need. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You're not a good friend, oh, and you're just telling me now. Get your salary-based loan on a lat with zero documentation, all in the palm of your hand. Note, this is only available for salary earners. Terms and conditions apply. A lat powered by Wema Bank. <laughs> Breakfast 
your day every day with the nourishment of malt, milk and cocoa and the delicious taste of Milo. Food, good life. What will you do if you win a million Naira this month? This Christmas, one lucky player will close the year with one million Naira cash in the Zbet end of year promo. To stand a chance, all you have to do is sign up and place a minimum total bet of 5,000 Naira on Zbet.ng between the 7th and the 23rd of December and automatically qualify. That's not all. Two other friends will also win 250,000 Naira each. Visit www.zbet.ng for more details. Zbet. We speak your game. Mama, me now want send money. Make a me now collect for school. No, be now want we draw for your card. But you no know, carry me card. Hey, we waiting, waiting and go lose. Some more can go lose. Some more agents can go use it. Waiting, waiting. You see, room care won't pay light bill. Plus, Richard Go TV. Now, with your Momo agent, you fit send and receive money, plus to withdraw money for your bank account without card or data. You fit also buy airtime and data or pay any kind bill where you want. Just dial star 223 hash to see the Momo agent way near you. Momo agent, safe. Fast, no wahala. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We are back. We're back on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I am Sandra Ezekwasili. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We're looking back at 2020, one month at a time, starting or continuing really with April. We started on Tuesday with January. Today we are in April. Uh, I told you the biggest story of the month was COVID-19. We started with Lagos, where enforcement was grabbing the headlines with uh, 600 vehicles impounded, uh, people being arrested for having parties in their houses, Abakiari's funeral with lots of government officials, including Boss Mustafa, attending. Uh, We also talked about uh, COVID-19 palliatives, right? We had uh, crude oil prices crashing in March and April. Federal government said it would have to slash the budget. Uh, In Lagos, we had the lockdown that affected the economy. Offices and businesses were shut down. People were put on half salary or they were put on unpaid leave. It was rough. And government said, we're going to step in. We're going to help. We're going to share palliatives. We're going to uh, provide money for 11 million uh, uh, Nigerians who are really, really poor, and they were going to do that with a register, a social register. And one of the questions I'm asking on the show today is if you know anybody who was a recipient of either the palliatives or who was a recipient uh, 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 on the social register. And then we talked about testing, how Nigeria wasn't testing enough. The target back in April was 1,500 tests per day, but at the time we were doing less than uh, 500 a day. There was also conversation about PPEs for medical workers. Also happening in April, insecurity. Insecurity was also in the headlines, especially the war on Boko Haram. A video went viral of a top general describing uh, the problems on the front line. Uh, general Deni, I don't know if you remember General Deni at the time. His video went viral, and uh, there was so much that um, happened as a result of that particular video. An update, by the way, on General Deni. Shortly after that, he was removed as commander of Operation Lafayette, and just a few weeks ago, he was court-martialed. Meanwhile, across the border, there was much better news. Chad was winning. We were still trying to defeat Boko Haram. Government was trying different things on the battlefield and off the battlefield. But you had uh, Chad at the time winning their own battle. It was quite great. It was. What did you think of that at the time? What did you think of General Adeni's video and his court martial? What about the Chadian army's wins over Boko Haram? You can still tell me about uh, the palliatives, you know, what you thought about how government handled COVID-19 in April. 
Why do you think there were so many problems with supplying PPEs and palliative distribution and testing? And why do you think so many people were willing to disobey the lockdown, like the caller who called me, or Ogene Tega, talking to me about disobeying lockdown and not getting COVID-19? What did you think about the impounding of those vehicles here in Lagos? What did you think at the time about um, the arrest of Funke Akindele and uh, Badamosi? What about VIPs who overcrowded um, Abakiari's funeral in violation of COVID-19 guidelines? 0700-993-993-993-0700-993-993-993. You can also share your thoughts with me uh, via WhatsApp 080-959-75805. 080 959-75805. Twitter's at Nigeria Info FM and uh, there's Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3. Hello, thanks for calling us. Hello? Yes, welcome. What's your name? Hello? Okay, I guess you couldn't hear me. 99.3, hello? Oh, sorry about that. If you can't, please call me. Sandra. Good to have you on the show. What's your name? Yeah, let me remain anonymous. All right, go ahead. In respect of uh, the the Nigerian fighting of Boko Haram, mm. there was a time in this country where over 300 soldiers resigned. The simple reason is why? Because Nigeria government enlisted some people, the so-called dependent Boko Haram, into military. And those guys saw what is happening. They simply threw, threw in the towel. You get my point? I'm hearing you. Second, the way this country is going in security, nothing to write home about. My social Lagos, two drops are taking over everywhere. And the government and Nigeria police are not doing anything. People have turned to self defense now in various areas in Lagos. Thank you. All right. Ooh. Thank you for calling. We appreciate it. 99.3. Hello. 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 How are you? What's your name? Fine. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. What's your name, sir? Mr. Ogochuku on the line. Mr. Ogochuku, welcome. Calling from Ajia area. Welcome, Mr. Ogochuku. Go ahead. Hey, Sandra. This is our Nigeria. This is our nation. We need Driverland. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Because we know the truth, but we don't want to do it. All right, then. <laughs> Thank you for calling us. Uh, we've got WhatsApp, by the way. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. 080 Nine five nine seven five eight zero five. Dennis Sidowo says, "Be it partial or total, we don't need another lockdown. Um, let the government focus on bigger challenges. Example: insecurity, poverty, unemployment, etc. We've suffered enough, and we're wiser now because of all their evil exposed during the last lockdown. Example: hoarding of palliatives. All right, Dennis. Thanks for your message." Let's see if we've got more here. Mm, Raphael says, oh, no, no, no. That's not a message for us specifically. Well, let's talk to Eze Doom. Eze Doom is in Suru Liri. Eze Doom, welcome to the show. Hello, Eze Doom. Hello, Sandra. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. I greet you. I greet you as well. Compliments on the show. Same to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. April is a terrible month, a, a month that exposed our challenges. We need the lockdown. The lockdown exposed our health sector, our food supply chain, and our identity. You know, during the lockdown, our hospitals were jam-packed. There was a health emergency. 
the mix between the COVID-19 patients and the normal patients, there was hectares scatter. It exposed us in the sense that our system, we lack emergency capacity to hold on uh, if there is a, a disease outbreak. We don't have the, the facility to hold on to a large number of people. That is why some some government begin to plan on how they build isolation centers near the airport. That one apart. The lockdown exposed our food supply system where when Nigeria became too hunger, the government and the people don't know how to distribute food to people. We don't have sound food supply chain. The third one is that we don't have identity. The government don't know the citizen, and citizen don't know the government. Sandra, remember when there was commotion on how government will distribute the politics? Is it to, to credit uh, the citizen through their bank system? But when you don't know who the citizens are, that is why I support the new NIM, NIM policy so that people will be on the database so that if there is a health emergency, the government will know how to reach the people. And uh, the final one is that the, the lockdown exposed our unity and our planning system. We, we don't have a responsive government. In fact, to be, to be clear with you, I, I'm meeting Abba Kiare. May he soon rest in peace. I will not tell you why I am meeting him. Um, Sandra, mm. before I go, I, am, I will tell you that we are having this challenge because we fail to do what is right, which I complained before the election. But let us have hope that 2023 is in shape. Nigerians should prepare. I want to ask you, Sandra, we must not blame only President Buhari what was vice president? I want to challenge the vice president. Let him tell Nigeria if there is a policy he initiated with the president and the president say no. I don't want a situation whereby when the president go or is about to go, somebody will come to the stage and begin to claim sense. No. Let us ask where, what is the contribution of Vice President Osim Bajo to the Buhari situation. I condemn ISADIS, I condemn hypocrisy, hypocrisy, I condemn when you are my friend or you know that something is going but because of ISADIS or because of your selfish friend, you cannot tell me the truth because of your friend, because of what you gain for me. Let us ask what is the contribution of the vice president, the, of the vice president to the Buhari's administration. So that after eight years, nobody will come and claim sense. Like we are judging Atiku for not performing under Obasanjo. We are going to judge Osim Bajo for performing woefully, woefully under President Buhari. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sandra. I remain as you As you do. Thank you for calling us. I wonder if Michael and Uri is still on the line. Hello, Michael. Yes, good evening. Sandra. Good evening. Thanks for calling us. Uh, I want to ask uh, Mm. Is Osim Bajo is in, is he in this country? Osim Bajo, yes, he presided over the FEC meeting last uh, Wednesday. Okay, yeah. okay. And secondly, mm. I want to ask again: On which side is our president? In? Is he in the side of the Boko Haram or is the side of what Nigeria? He's obviously on I the side of Nigerians. That's that's not uh, a nice uh, question. Uh, Sandra, mm. the truth is this: mm -hmm. we must know the truth because the only truth can set us free. The truth remains this. The body language of our president, our president is not in our side, and you should know that. Every Nigerian should No, you can't say that. That's not a, a statement that you can make, especially because you can't back it up with evidence that uh, the president isn't on your side. He's the president of the country. On whose side will he be if he's not on the side of the nation? Now, let me take you to Kano. In April, remember, we had a big story out of Kano. Mysterious deaths and the authorities uh, couldn't decide whether or not the cause of the deaths were COVID or was COVID-19. Do you remember? What's the mood like in Kano? How are 
ordinary people feeling about their health and their safety right now? Now, the, the, the mood in Kano is okay right now. Even though we have some challenges regarding to this issue of a mysterious death, and that has been the main problem that people are conf- have been confronted with in Kano State. And as a result of that, some people are being scared that hope it will not be the next thing happening to me. Because in the last uh, over 10 days now, we've been counting a series of deaths in Kano State. And initially, the state government did not pay attention when people were raising the alarm. But got to a stage where they could no longer deny. So they admitted that this is happening and they are investigating the matter. But the two things that are really giving people source of concern in Kano right now, number one, the lockdown. Number two, the rate in which people are being buried on daily basis. And uh, that mysterious death story took a lot of turns. Remember all that talk about verbal autopsies. Remember the lab getting contaminated and so they couldn't do COVID tests for a while. Do you remember? Yeah, it was a lot. And there was another big story out of uh, the North in April uh, 2020. Almagiris. Do you remember? The Northern Governors Forum met and they banned Almagiri. Do you remember? They said it was to slow down the spread of COVID. So suddenly, state governments started rounding up these children to send them back to their states of origin. And then it raised a lot of questions. Who are they sending them to? How do you ensure that these children are going back to their parents and back to a safe place? But now, looking back, another question is, did the bans work? Did the ban work? Are Almagiris off the streets in the north? That's a question I'm going to let you answer because you're the one who travels. Some of you do business in the north or you have relatives in the north. Has the ban on Almagiris been sustained eight months later? What did you think at the time about uh, the mysterious deaths in Kano and how the government handled them? What do you think right now, eight months later? 0700-993-993-993. So far, we've talked about how Lagos handled the lockdown when they were enforcing um, the arrest of Funke Akindeleg, Baramosi, uh, the impounding of uh, 600 cars. We've also talked about Abakiari's funeral. We've talked about COVID-19 palliatives, the money that they were supposed to distribute. We've talked about insecurity that happened uh, in April as well. Uh, General Denny's video, uh, the battle that Chad had on Boko Haram and their victory. And now we're talking about the mysterious deaths and al being banned. Ekus is in Ekate. Ekus, sorry about that. Call back again if you can. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. What's your name? Andrea Vardam on the line. Yes, we've had so many stories from April. Which one do you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about the general uh, Adini Adini video. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think uh, for me, I cannot fault him, you know. The reason is that the man complained that uh, the fire fire is too much. He complained about the tires of their vehicles, you know, and their ammunition, and is seeking for help. And the uh, Nigerian Air Force, that are not helping. All of the sudden, we hear that demand was removed from the other side. So I don't know the reason why they do that. He complained. He seeks for help. Let them help, you know. Even this Chekhov now, that six days ago, he, com- he, he, he claimed that he was the one that abducted this uh, children of Kasina. And uh, he played a video that uh, Nigerian Air Force stopped sending uh, airplanes to their side and they are going to release the children safely and all that. This is deceiving. Let the Air Force send the plane. Let the Sheko feel the heat. They can do it. I believe in them, but 
I don't know why. They are just they can if if because because it's gorilla war, let them feed these innocent people. You know, I select them and bomb that place totally. Yes. Why uh, Shakao is not insulting this baby? The man takes no notice. The Chadian soldiers, they take no notice. So they are dealing with them seriously. So let Nigerian army do with them seriously. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much for calling us. Uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, Joseph, who's calling as well. Hello, Joseph. Yeah, Joseph, I'm a Joseph online. Yes, Joseph, welcome. Yeah, as you said, for all the time to from the uh, uh, pandemic, and uh, today they ask everybody to go and register. Me, as you know, that no way the government helps the masses at all. Okay. Whether from the Boko Haram, from the uh, Palestine, from what, any thing. Okay. So, what people that are calling, I think that support, I think that they are. All of us know that no one that we, uh, that we come at and push our government, both for our uh, empathy, uh, everything. What they do is everything, what they work up, they just. I'm hearing something echo, Joseph, and it's not making for smooth conversation, unfortunately. But thank you so much for calling. I do appreciate it. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, Lagos. But you can listen to this interview again. Listen to it on uh, our podcast. Our podcast is Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekwesili. It's available on all streaming platforms. So go and listen again uh, to the conversations we've had today, including the interview we had with the general manager uh, legal affairs for NIMSI. I'm talking about Hadiza. Uh, she was on the show, Hadiza Ali Dagabana, and she talked about the process. She talked, she answered a lot of questions that Nigerians have about the process, and she hinted at potential um, extension of the deadline. Until tomorrow when I am back on your air, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili on social media. Those were your hard facts, Lagos. Have a good evening. More news and information coming up. We'll be back in a moment. More than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.